Congratulations on this film. Thank you. It's Thank it's you. a fascinating, fascinating story. Um, tell me a little bit about how you were approached to, to direct this. Uh, well, it's all Saoirse Ronan's fault, really. Um, ah. She uh, was um, sent the script by Focus and and um, expressed interest, uh, asked who was going to direct it, and they didn't have a director on board, and so mm -hmm. she suggested me. Um, which uh, so when we were in frozen Finland at minus twenty nine degrees with a dead deer, I turned around to her and said, "This is all your fault. How did you ever get me into this?" <laughs> and her as well. She was freezing. Yeah. Yeah, no, we kind of uh, bolstered each other up. You, uh, she told me about the time you made her run twice, sprint across the ice. Yeah, only twice. <laughs> no, she has this extraordinary imagination and, and uh, uh, incredibly powerful talent uh, to believe, really. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was reading somewhere the other day that, that the idea that, that, that to believe is a talent um, and therefore can be a kind of national talent uh, and that the, 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 the Russians uh, are very talented at belief and I think possibly the same could be true, uh, could be said of the Irish, that they're very kind of talented at belief um, and uh, I think so she definitely is, just well, not religiously. Yeah, she's certainly wonderful in this character. How, how would you describe this character and, and the film itself to someone, because I'm, ha I'm having trouble categorizing it. It's I kind of like that about it, to be honest with you. I kind of like the kind of um, uh, that it doesn't really it defies genre categorization. Um, uh, I guess it's a. I guess you could kind of say it was a, a kind of fairy tale thriller action drama mm -hmm. with suspense and humour, uh, and it doesn't really exist um, uh, on this plane. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Yeah. And she, uh, her character... Oh, the character, yes. ...is yeah. like, almost like an alien that fell to Earth or something. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was uh, what I really liked about the film uh, uh, initially, was this, this the, the, the kind of um, opportunity her otherness affords us to see the world mm -hmm. uh, with sort of fresh eyes. I really, I really enjoy those kind of characters, like... Um, Chancy Gardner and being there would be an example, or, or even E.T. Um, there's something very special about um, the man, or in this case the teenage girl who fell to earth. Yeah, and there's a dichotomy too because she's an innocent and yet she's a survivalist. Too. Yeah, absolutely, and there's, there's a kind of, uh, I really enjoyed that contrast and especially, you know, this, this very angelic looking uh, kid. Uh, who's then able to be quite deadly, I thought was quite quite fun. But in a way, the action stuff is kind of um, uh, obviously very important to the entertainment uh, value, but it's kind of of little consequence thematically, really. Mm -hmm. One of the first things we did in, in rehearsals um, uh, was to work on her physicality as a, 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 um, as a creature and, and to think about how she moved and and or especially how she didn't move very much but was very still and then very quick when she needed to be and, and very balanced and centered and good posture and all of these things uh, the physicality informed the the character um, to, to a large extent. like the actors to uh, to leave space for the audience to project their own emotion and their own understanding the scenes when she uh, meets the family and sees what a real family interaction mm. is supposed to be, those were quite touching. Yeah, I mean, that's something she's never had before, and and um, uh, I guess she's privileged in some ways and, and, and not in others. And, uh, and also, I think, you know, she's never encountered women before, and mm. the film is very much um, uh, uh, about being a young woman and, and what it is to be a young woman or, or uh, in the 21st century and so um, uh, she's particularly fascinated by these female characters and, and, and how she you know she kind of knows that she's one of them but doesn't mm -hmm. really understand. You're very well known for your amazing tracking shots, these continuous camera movement that takes you along the beach at Dunkirk mm -hmm. and, and also here in the subway 
Was that something that you like to do, or you enjoy doing, or what's the... I love doing them. I mean, it's a kind of... I enjoyed the kind of theatricality of, of, of you know, it's like putting on a show, really. Everyone gets really involved, and... and uh, but really, they're born of necessity. Um, a scene like the one in the underground, uh, in this film, would have probably taken about 40 uh, setups. Um, uh, if it had been a montage sequence, and that would have taken me about three days, yeah. and I just didn't have that amount of time to shoot it, so it's a kind of all or nothing gamble um, uh, where you sort of rehearse for seven hours and then finally um, turn over towards the end of the day and, and um, uh, hope you're all good enough really uh, to get it. That's amazing. And how many cameras do you have? Are there others just following? No, no, just no, no, one no, no, camera? Yeah, 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 yeah. God, that must be nerve-wracking. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun of it, yeah. Yeah, Eric really loved it. Yeah, oh, good. Did he? Yeah. He I haven't really hardly seen him this time around. Yeah, he's, he's in there. shut he's... away in a, in a holding cell. <laughs> exactly, as he should be. <laughs> now, did um, were you surprised by your young actress's ability to learn those skills and fighting techniques? I mean, she looks so frail and Kind demure. of, but not really. Huh? Sersha, I think, is... Uh, She's kind of capable of anything. She's got an incredibly strong will, yeah. and um, uh, not in, a, in, in an aggressive sense, but in a kind of determination. And uh, she can kind of do anything. Also, yeah. her father was like Irish champion black belt karate or something oh. like that. Yeah, so, um, so it runs. Now, what are you working on next? Uh, I think uh, if we can get the money together. I think we're going to do an adaptation of Anna Karenina. Ah, oh, uh, with um, with Kira. With Kira yeah. again, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've just got a, a new Chanel ad come out um, with Kira. Mm -hmm. uh, it's lovely to, to uh, work with her again, and uh, yeah, I think that's. Oh, did you shoot that one? Yeah, with the with the oh, suede really? jumpsuit. Yeah, oh my yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, how cool. Yeah, it was fun. Moonlighting. Uh, yeah, just for Chanel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you going to bring, how is your Anna Karenina going to be different? Are there any um, thoughts about well, it? Well, a, a lot of, um, you know, previous adaptations have always focused solely on Anna's story. Uh, but for me, I, I, I think um, what I love about the book is the, is the multi-stranded nature of it. And, and Levin and Kitty and, and Oblonsky and all these other characters. It feels like mm -hmm. a kind of, you know, multi-stranded Robert Altman uh, structure sort of a hundred years before we made a film and, and so uh, so I quite like the idea of, of you know balancing all the characters making more of an ensemble yeah. piece. Well that sounds fascinating. Yeah, That'll really fun. bring the book to life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope so. Oh. Tom Stoppard has written the screenplay. Oh really? Oh, well then, so, it, then yeah. it's bound to be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> One great scene in your film um, with Kate Blanchett cleaning her teeth. Mm. You gotta tell me about that. Uh, well it's just a little thing being English and coming to America, and everyone's always commenting about you know my funny teeth, uh, and everyone has these perfect teeth in this this country, very much like yourself. Uh, uh, I just um, and also it kind of you know spoke to spoke to me of of, of Kate's desire for perfection and uh, and how really perfection can never be attained. Now her character is sort of um, is there any parallels between the witch, the wicked witch? Very much so, yeah. and all the characters are like archetypes, and yeah. uh, and so um, or are archetypes. Fairy tale archetypes. Um, yeah. yeah, and so uh, so I like the idea that she was the wicked witch, a kind of um, sexy. She wore witch. more makeup than I've ever seen her wear in any film. Well, she was very determined that that kind of woman would wear a lot of makeup. Yeah. You know, I was really uh, I was really impressed by that. She kind of. Um, caked it on and, uh, and and very specifically I remember in the first makeup test uh, it's funny you should bring that up you're the first person to do so um, in the first makeup test she said that she really wanted the audience to be able to see the makeup um, and yeah. Uh, and yeah they, the minute it was over I was like what no wait <laughs> and I want more so uh, I've, that's I've good. talked to Sersha and she right. said she's up for a sequel if you are um, really yep um, if uh, she is and if the conditions are right, then maybe I don't know. I don't know. I kind of I love the character so much. I, I, I'd like to see where um, she took us. I'd like to see mm -hmm. uh, her impression of a of a cattle farm, or um, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see what she uh, thought of a 
fashion runway. Yeah. yeah. And how she thought possibly the two are quite similar. It would be really interesting because there's so